Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that you have given us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing each one of us to reach here safe and sound and in good health. Oh, Lord Jesus, we surrender the word that is being taught into your hands. And we also surrender ourselves into your hands, oh Lord. We pray that you help us to understand what is being taught and help us to remember what is being taught and that your word bears fruit a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, okay. <clears throat> so last week, we learned about the fourth part of the circle of life. Now, what are the five parts of circle of life? Justification and glorification. Yes. So, last week we learned about the fourth part of the circle of life that is justified. So, how how are we justified in God's kingdom? Joel set aside. How are we justified in God's kingdom? How are we justified? You remember? No? How did God justify us? By dying on the cross. Huh? On the cross. God's righteous judgment demanded the death penalty for sin and the shedding of blood. So God sent, who did he send? Jesus. Jesus. And who was Jesus? Huh? I can't hear. Yes. God sent his son Jesus to pay the penalty for our sins. He, redeem, he has redeemed us and made us the righteousness of God. And this is how we are justified. Okay? Got it? Now, after being justified is when we begin to discover what is written in the... In the... Book of Life. Not Book of Life. Written in the... No. Book. Books. Yes. Written in what books? Huh? Story books? I can't hear you. Why are you all mumbling? Books where... What is written in those books? About our life. Yes. So, after being justified is when we begin to discover what is written in the books of heaven about us. No. Book of Life is different. Where our names are written, not our stories. So, what we were made for. So, after being justified is when we begin to discover what is written in the books of heaven about us. What we were made for. So, how do we realize God's plan and purpose for our lives? How do we understand God's plan and purpose for our lives? Huh? Not for you. How do we understand God's plan? Huh? Reading the Bible. Yes. So how do we understand, uh, realize God's plan and purpose for our life? By renewing our mind in the word of God. In the word of God. So as we renew our mind in the word of God, that is Jesus is the word of God, we need to conform to that which made everything. So do you remember the memory verse? And what does the memory verse say? Learned one. You didn't learn, huh? You both learned? Yes? Eh? You didn't learn? Did you learn? Hmm. the the was the Without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. Yes. So who is this talking about? Jesus. Yes. So that's what I said. As we renew our mind in the word of God, who is the word of God? Yes. So as we renew our mind in the word of God, Jesus is the word of God. We need to conform to that which made everything. So... In John 1, 1, 4, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that, that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
So last week, we learned that God calls us to eternal glory by Jesus Christ. And the fifth and final stage of the circle of life is what? What is the final stage of the circle of life? Huh? Glorification. Yes, glorified or glorification. So let us first read some scriptures from the word of God where the word glorify or glory is used. So do you have Isaiah 43, 7 in your book? Yes? Yes? All of you are there? Shall I read? You all are there, right? Isaiah 43, 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Okay? And Matthew 5.16 is there? Yes. Okay, there it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Did you see that? Okay, and in 1 Corinthians 6.20, is it there in the book? It says, For you were brought for you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, why, why was I reading these verses? To see the word glorify a glory in the word of God. Okay, so now in the above verses, it is talking about being created for God's glory or glorifying God. In these verses, that's what it's talking about, right? Other Either we are being created for God's glory or it is a, it's talking about glorifying God. So if we look into the meaning of the word glorify or glory in the Bible, some of the definitions are to honor or to magnify or to praise or to make renowned or to cause the dignity of... It's like basically when you see a king, what do you do? Huh? Yes, don't you say, uh, long live king or we praise you and all that. You say all those things, right? To basically make him bigger than you, right? So that is what glory, glorify or glory means. So to honor, to magnify, magnify means make it bigger than us. To magnify, to praise, to make renowned, all that. So how can we glorify God? So let us look at the below verse, that is James 1.21. Do you have that? Therefore, lay aside all filthiness. You know what filthiness is? You, do you know what filth is? Yes? Anything that does not look nice is filthy. Okay? So lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Did you understand that? Or should I explain that to you? Yes? What happened, Jake? So it says, therefore lay aside all filthiness, that anything and everything which is not good, keep it aside. And overflow of wickedness. You know what wickedness is, right? Anything and everything that is not good, again, you have wicked thoughts, you have wicked intentions, those are not good, right? So keep all that aside and receive with meekness. Meekness means, you know who is meek? They're not about to charge, but they're like gentle. Receive with meekness the implanted word of God. Okay? Which is able to save what? Save your souls. Yes. So we glorify God by fulfilling God's plan and purpose for our lives. So how do you glorify God? By? How do we glorify God? Can I ask you something? You are all students, right? If you do bad in school, who will it affect? Huh? But then who will the principal call? Will they talk to you or will they call the parents? Huh? So will the parents be happy if you do the job that you're supposed to do? Huh? Yes. My goodness. If you study properly, if you have good children in school, won't your parents be happy? Yes. Will the principal call your parents? No. Huh? So right now, when you, your job is to study when you're going to school, right? Yes? So just like that, if God has given you a job, won't He be happy if you do your job? Yes. So we glorify God by fulfilling God's plan and purpose for our lives. 
Just like how you make your parents happy, you make God happy by doing what He had planned for you. So let us now read Romans 8, 28 to 30 once again. Now, do you have that in your book? No? Yes or no? So we, yeah, yeah, 8, 20. 29, from 29, it's there? Just 20. Okay, then just listen to me. I've got a verse before that. Okay. And we know that all things work together for good to those... Jake, are you there? I'll wait for you. Are you there? Okay, then open your Bible. Romans 8, 28 to 30. Twenty-eight to thirty. Are you all there? Okay. So we know, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Now, do you know that? Do you believe that everything works for your own good? Huh? Even if it is something bad. You believe that it will all at the end turn out to be something good for you? Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Good. Because that's what the Word of God says. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And this will happen only if you love God. If you don't love God, things will not turn out good for you. So, to those who are the called according to His purpose. So, for whom He foreknew. You remember what foreknew is? Yes? For whom? He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, who is this talking about? Huh? Yes. And moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called, whom He called, these He also justified, and whom He justified, these He also glorified. Okay? So did you all get that? Yes? This is how we started. I mean, this is how we started this circle of life. Understood? So it is important to understand that in this verse, being glorified is not talking about going to heaven. It is speaking about us fully stepping into all that which is written in what? In the books of heaven about us. So that is what being glorified means. So you have, it is speaking about us fully stepping into all that is, it is written in the books of heaven about us. We begin to, we begin to live the dream that God has had about us before time began. And this has been called the convergence point. That means it is where everything have gone through good or bad works together to propel us into our ultimate destiny. So that means at the point of our glorification, that, that is when we start to fulfill. So whatever happened before we are being glorified, okay, whatever good or bad happened, that will use, have you seen this uh, fan kind of thing under the ship? Yes? If it, if it goes faster, won't the ship go faster? It's like it's propelling it, right? So like that, so whatever good or bad thing has, that has happened in your life, when you're, when you're in the glorification process, when you're going to fulfill that plan what God has, all the things that has happened in your life will act like this fan, like the propel. It'll propel, it'll, it'll, you, it'll be used as something that'll like push you. Understood? So that's what it says. So we begin to live the dream that God had about us before time began and this has been called the convergence point and it is where everything we have gone through good or bad works together to propel us into our ultimate destiny so whatever happened in your life suppose this is you so whatever happened over here good or bad will be used as something that will push you forward to your ultimate destiny to fulfill the dream that god has for each one of you okay so all this will happen only if you love God. 
if you don't love god it won't happen so we see this in the life of joseph do you know joseph in the bible yes you know the story of joseph okay so we see this in the life of joseph where he was in his father's house but then he was sold by who sorathes by his brothers to what he was sold as what ah huh? as a slave yes he was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers and but then he ended up ruling over the household of do you know who it was do you know who it was ah huh? potiphar yes potiphar so he ended up ruling the household of potiphar then he was cast into prison unjustly do you remember why he was cast into prison did he do anything wrong no but then he was unjustly put into prison after which he was promoted from this most unlikely place to be the prime minister of egypt do you remember that yes and he became the preserver of life that means being made responsible for all the storehouses during the time of famine you know what famine is um so he he became the sole source of people de- of be- people depending on because when there was a famine they didn't know who else to go to when there was no food for so many years so that is why they say he became he was made he became the preserver of life being made responsible for all the storehouses during the time of famine that god had destined him to be as it was written in the books in books heaven yes so joseph see from his childhood things were not good from the time he was born his i mean after his younger brother was born his mother died but he was a favorite of his father and then his brother sold him do you think all that is good for a child is that good he was sold as a slave then he was unjustly put in prison that is nothing great if it was you won't you feel bitter won't you be angry you would be like why is god doing this to me Don't you think that? But see, God wanted to do something with Joseph. Wanted to mold him into a bigger uh to fulfill his purpose, to fulfill his destiny, to fulfill what is written in about him in his books. So if because Joseph went through all that, all that became a what? what remember the fan I talked told you what it become? It became a yes, propeller to push him to his destiny. So All of these things work together and converge together to prepare and get Joseph to his appointed place. So sometimes certain things happen in your life because God wants you to go through it and learn something from it. Otherwise, you would never be prepared for what God has planned for you. When God puts you, if he if he just gives you a promotion if he puts you there and when something happens you wouldn't know what to do, you wouldn't know how to behave, you wouldn't know how to speak. If Joseph didn't go through this and if he was become he if he became the prime minister would he know how to handle it wisely he wouldn't but because God made him go through all that that's what it's that's what it's saying here all of these things work together and converge together to prepare and get Joseph to his appointed place he then from his glorified position had the kingdom impact that was predestined by God that he was to have understood so the reaching of the convergence point of our lives can be costly and expensive but worth it what does that mean that means to reach this convergence point where we are being glorified it might not be easy sometimes it will be painful sometimes you will not like what you have been what you're going through but it is worth it how many of you are into sports Yes. So when you are practicing sports or anything, do, does your muscles and all hurt in the beginning? Do you get tired? And if you give up, will you get the medal? No. No. So you have to practice, right? Even if you have pain, you have to push yourself, right? So that's why it says that at the end of the day when you get that medal, you will know that pain or the tiredness or whatever you went through, it is worth it. Right? So just like that, The reaching of the convergence point of our lives can be costly and expensive but it is worth it. No matter what you do at the end of the day if you get that prize aren't you happy? You won't look back and say oh I went through this pain you won't do that right? So 
not only do we find the ultimate satisfaction that we were built for but god gets his kingdom purpose fulfilled through us so the most critical stage of this process for individuals all the way to nations is being justified so remember what what are the five parts of the circle of life yeah Glorified, justified, glorified. Now, without being justified, can you be glorified? No. So, the most critical stage of this process for individuals all over the nation or all over the world is being what? Is being? You should be? Justified. Justified. Once we maneuver our ways through the courts of heaven and get legal things arranged, God can freely then grant to us the passion of his heart. See when you when you're going to join a school if your birth certificate and if your TC or everything is not in place from your old school will you get admission? If you have not paid the admission fee will you get the admission? No. Or if you're going abroad if your passport is expired or if you don't have your visa or tickets can you go abroad? So everything should be set, right? that is where you are being justified so that is what it's saying the most critical stage of this process for individuals all the way to the nations is being justified so once we maneuver our way through the courts of heaven and get legal things arranged god can freely then grant us the passion of his heart therefore the battle is to get what is in his will as written in his books manifested on earth through our lives Okay so that is the battle to understand what is what God has planned for each one of us that is the battle and for that now let us memorize the below verse for next sunday that is Matthew 6:10 is it there in the book Matthew 6:10 yes can you tell me of which prayer is this yes So this will be easy for you next week, right? Matthew 6:10. I know. I know. Next week when I ask, you shouldn't ask me which is the memory verse. So, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is it saying over here? Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. So that is what our will is, right? Because we want to do God's will. what is written in god's books about us so that's that's what this verse says your let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so let's pray thank you lord jesus for this time that you have given us we surrender each one of us into your hands and we pray that you remind us of what is being taught oh lord and you guide us and strengthen us to walk as per our calling throughout this entire week and we also pray that your word bears fruit a hundredfold oh lord in jesus name we pray amen